Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today we're talking about a model that launched back in 2018, part of the DayFi Classic series. This is the DayFi Classic Black Ceramic. Open dial, 41 millimeter, ultra light, hypoallergenic, scratch resistant ceramic case. You can see the watch is nice and thin too. Only 10.9 millimeters thick and from lug to lug, a compact 45 millimeters. This is a watch that wears light and easy on a wrist of any size. I could recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference. And indeed on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see these dead on, down the barrel, and the sleeve or cuff shot, the cuff shot revealing that this watch will wear easily underneath a tight cuff. It's extravagant, it's stark, but it could be your dress watch. Now taking a quick look at the hardware and the software, as I like to say, the strap is exemplary. There is a hobnail pattern molded in. There's also striations on the flank designed to give a little bit more detail and articulation. You can see it actually continues the case lines. There is a taper such that it swells to match the swell of the lugs. And then you can also see it converges on the lug profile at its end, it thins out as you approach the buckle, and there is a full deployment clasp, the cap of which is ceramic to resist scratches to the same degree as the watch. Now it's both polished and satin finished, just like the watch. Internally, it is black titanium. You can see the Zenith star. It's a fun clasp because once buckled down, all of the excess length is underneath the clasp, which means none of the excess length is flapping in the breeze, and there's no need for strap minder loops to mar the strap. Also, it only opens when you press both triggers, so it's not a friction fit system and it's quite secure. The watch uses a case shape descended from the DeFi sports watches of the 1970s. So while the profile might be evocative of Hublot and Tag Heuer watches in the modern era, historically, this is Zenith's own shape. You'll note that it is complex and faceted with a matte finish along the flank and then polished highlights, just a few polished highlights, to set apart and provide contrast. You can see that the crown itself, though not a screw down, is still impressively water resistant as the entire timepiece is rated to 100 meters and thus swimmable. The dial is immensely deep and detailed with textural, tonal, and material contrasts. You'll also appreciate the fact that the individual indices are steel and rhodium plated and cantilevered out from a rayhawk or flange outboard. The depth is fantastic. You can see that the dial itself has been wrought in such a fashion that it's almost in the form of a wheel spoke or the spokes of a high performance automotive wheel. So the rolling stock aesthetic gives the watch a cool techno look and a machine on top of a machine as underneath you can see the workings of the Elite Caliber 670. Now the watch does have loom, there will be a loom shot at the end, but for the most part it uses black luminova so the glow will be minimal. What I love most is not just the depth here, but the fact that it is an easy watch to read in spite of having an open dial with an all black aesthetic or at least a grayscale aesthetic, it is very legible. You'll also appreciate the fact that the silver of the base plate contrasts nicely with the nickel anthracite of the dial. And you can see there is a date with a little skeletonized disc that runs circumferentially and there is a panel that sort of backlights or illuminates the current date. Now you'll note the watch does feature hacking seconds. It also features a quick set, and this has been a characteristic of the Elite since the first model in 1994. It features a quick set that you can turn in either direction, which is frankly brilliant. Now you'll also note that the escapement is visible, beaten away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. You see that almost iridescent purple blue? It is a full silicon unlubricated escapement, which extends the service interval to beyond five years and, I should mention, minimizes friction and improves performance in between servicings. Turn the watch over and you can see that Zenith Caliber 670. 27 jewels, a handsome silver brushed finish. It's a bit more stark and deliberately more industrial than the more classical finishes you'll find, for example, on many of the El Primero models. Uh, the classical Chronomaster look here giving way to an all grayscale aesthetic, black for the case, polished silver, a few satin gray elements, and a few media blasted hollows as well. It's a good looking movement, automatic winding with a 50 hour power reserve. You get outstanding quality from Zenith, which is still known 
as the watchmaking brand within LVMH and well-deserved as they've been an integrated manufacturer in Lolook since 1865. They were one of the first. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And I'm back with the Zenith Dayfly Classic Black Ceramic. It's loomed, but only just.